In this video, we talk about the penis and penile pathologies. So just some background information. Um, when we're talking about anatomy, when we talk about the ventral surface, we're talking about our front side. Dorsal surface, we're talking about our back side. <clears throat> but the penis is flipped. See, in the anatomical position, it's not flaccid, it's erect, over-optimistically erect, kind of like this. And so the ventral surface is actually the bottom of the penis, and the dorsal surface is actually the front of the penis. Long story short, it's just flipped. Okay, so I'll just write it down for you. Ventral is going to be the underside. Dorsal is going to be, I guess, the front. So these are flipped. I had a question on my step that was just basically making sure I, I remembered that, that it was flipped. It was a very simple question. So just remember, the penis is different because of the anatomical position. It's in the erect position. Second thing, just a review of the embryology of the penis. Your external genitalia is controlled by what hormone? That'd be DHT, correct? And during development, you have this little budding coming out called a tubercle. That's what tubercle means. It means an outgrowth or a budding. That's called a genital tubercle and DHT will cause it to grow, eventually form your penis. And at the same time, you have these, uh, these folds called urogenital folds and they come together on the bottom they make the urethra and if the stars align and everything goes correctly then you have a nice straight penis with a urethra that comes out right in the center for the most part that's how it works but sometimes things can go wrong and if things go wrong especially the urethra you can have it on the other side aka your ventral surface or you can have the urethra on the front of your penis aka the dorsal side. We'll just talk about these quickly. These are called your epispadia and your hypospadia. So epispadia is when the urethra opens up on the dorsal side of your penis. So dorsal opening, urethra. And it's associated with bladder Extrophy. What the heck is that? That's when the bladder is outside of your body. You can actually see the bladder outside of your body and you're born with that. Every time we have an association, we think of everything we know about that association. Fortunately for us, nobody really knows why it's associated with this or what causes it in the first place. So don't really have to know anything about it. Just know that they're associated with each other. Hypospadia is when your urethra opens up on the bottom of your penis, aka the ventral side. So ventral opening, and this is associated with something too, it's associated with a downward curved penis. So your penis will look like this. And we just call that a chorty or a cordy. I had a question about cordy. I'm not exactly, I don't remember exactly the context of it, but they asked about a cordy is just a downward uh, facing penis and it's associated with hypospadia. That's your urethra. Something else, you have a little bit of excess skin on your penis. We just call that the foreskin. And if you're circumcised, you take that off. If you're not, you leave that on. And sometimes that foreskin can be overly tight and your penis can't penetrate through that foreskin. We call that phimosis. So phimosis is tight foreskin over penis. A lot of times not a problem, usually self-resolves. But sometimes if you take that tight foreskin and you pull it back, then it can get trapped. So let me draw this penis a little bit more anatomically correct. So penis looks more like, more like this. So you have really tight foreskin coming over the top. So if you pull that skin back for whatever reason, if you're showering, if you're having an erection, or you're going to the doctor and he or she's doing a physical exam and pulls it back, then you pull that skin back and it can get trapped underneath the glands penis and it can't go back. And that tra entrapment can cause ischemia. And we call all this para, para phi, Moses. This is when skin gets trapped 
gets trapped behind glands penis. These are just some anatomical, I guess, abnormalities. We're gonna move now on to one of the big things that affect not only the penis, but genitals, both male and female. And I'll give you a hint what it is. It's a virus. You can tell me what that is. I'm talking about HPV. HPV affects any organ, any part of your body that participates in sex. Don't just link HPV with cervix because it's not. I had a question about anal cancer and I got the question wrong because I was thinking it was clearly something dealing with HPV, but I kept thinking HPV is dealing with cervical cancer, cervical cancer. And I got the question wrong because I was so, I guess, honed in on the fact that HPV is associated with cervical cancer that I missed the boat. HPV is associated with any part of your body that deals with sex. So that includes your cervix, vagina, penis, anus, head and neck if you're really doing work. So any, any part of your body that's associated with sex can in contact with HPV. So we're gonna talk about it here, so penile HPV. You can have things like genital warts, we call that condylomas. Do you remember the strain of HPV that causes condylomas? Those are your low risk strains like six and 11. However, HPV can also be a little bit more sinister. It makes those proteins that rev up your cell cycle and can cause hyperplasia and eventually cancer. So you can have penile cancer or squamous cell carcinoma of the penis. Can you think of what strains might cause that? What are the high risk strains? That would be your 16, 18, and then we have a few more, 31, 33, etc. But these are your main ones. And all of this is associated with HPV and HPV affects cells and causes cells to change and look different. Do you remember what we call that? I know I'm giving you a lot of quiz questions. <laughs> I'm quizzing you a lot. I want you to participate because that's how you Remember these things, we call that coilocytic change. Yeah? Now, when we talked about cervical cancer, we talked about how you don't just go from zero to cancer right away. You can have a little bit of dysplasia and you can pick that up on pap smear. Same thing that goes with penile cancer. You can have precursor lesions, so you can have plaques, white plaques, you can have red plaques, we call that erythroplakia. You can have papules, but the, the, they all have shared something in common. They're all associated with HPV. They're all precancerous. But if you see lesions in the, in the penis, you, you want to do a biopsy or at least rule out cancer. One thing I want to talk about is something called Peyronie disease. And this is when you have fibrous tissue or scar tissue in your penis and it causes it to bend. So if you have fibrous tissue, it can pull on the penis and cause it to bend. So let's say fibrous tissue, bend. And that tissue develops on what we call the tunica albuginea. What is a tunica albuginea? Recall the penis is made up of these three cylindrical sponges that basically go up the length of the penis. And the two large paired ones are your corpus cavernosum. And the bottom one is your corpus spongiosum. And I think that's a very fitting name because they're like sponges. They fill up with blood and that's how your penis can expand or contract. The corpus cavernosum is covered by this sheath called your tunical, tunica albuginea. And if you have trauma to your penis for whatever reason, you can develop scar tissue, develop scar tissue, and that can contract on your corpus cavernosum, nosum, contract on your penis and cause it to bend. And that's what we call Peyronie's disease. We talked a ton about penile pathology, but we didn't even talk about the function of the penis. The function of the penis, and the function of the penis is to deliver sperm. How does it do that? is controlled by parasympathetic and sympathetic responses. Parasympathetic responses will cause nerves to release NO or nitric oxide. And nitric oxide goes into smooth muscle cells and activates 
guanylate cyclase. And that turns GTP into cyclic GMP. And cyclic GMP works on a protein kinase. Just write kinase. And that eventually, through its action on calcium receptors, decreases calcium in smooth muscle cells. Recall calcium in uh, smooth muscle cells cause contraction. So if you decrease calcium, they relax and they fill with blood and they pull with blood. And when they relax and pull with blood, it causes an erection. So that's your parasympathetic response. Your sympathetic response, sympathetic response causes ducts like your vas deferens and your ejaculatory ducts to contract and you ejaculate. So your sympathetic response is dealing with ejaculation. And those are the two main big ones. Your parasympathetic, which causes, causes you to have an erection, and your sympathetic response to ejaculate the sperm. Now it gets a little bit more complex as men can attest you have a little bit of control, somatic response of when you want to ejaculate. But for the most part, these are the main ones. And the memory aid that's been taught since the dawn of medicine is point and shoot. So P in point stands for parasympathetic. And point just means the erection part. The S in shoot stands for sympathetic. And that's the ejaculatory part. So point, erection, parasympathetic, shoot, ejaculation, sympathetic. That is your natural response. And then once you're done with ejaculation, something comes in called GMP specific phosphodiesterase type 5, which is a mouthful, but we just call it PDE5. That comes in and degrades stops this whole pathway, calcium rises, your muscles contract, your blood leaves, and you lose your erection in you. As the function of the penis, that's how it works. Now we can artificially or pharmaceutically manipulate these in patients that have erectile dysfunction that have trouble maintaining erections. And these are called ED drugs, erectile dysfunction drugs. These are gonna be your Viagra, your, your Cialis. That's the brand name. The actual name are things like Sildenafil, Verdenafil, and Tadalafil, so your afils essentially. And these all are PDE5 inhibitors. By blocking PDE5, you keep your cyclic GMP levels high, which work on kinase, which decrease calcium and keeps your erection. Now they can, Now these drugs can also cause vasodilation elsewhere, so they're used somewhat off-label for things like pulmonary hypertension to relax the vasculature of your lungs and relieve that. Raynaud's, which is vasospasms of your peripheral arteries, so you get these really blue, painful digits. So Raynaud's causes relaxation of those. And because it causes relaxation of those, you can probably imagine the side effects are going to be having to deal with vasodilation, so headache, flushing, and uh, hypotension, especially if you're taking something else that's a vasodilator, like nitroglycerin. You can, if you've ever seen those ads about ED drugs, I'd say, they tell you to be very careful if you're taking nitrates because it can cause severe hypotension, very, very severe hypotension. So know that. So no nitrates like nitroglycerin. Another common side effect that you should know is that it causes blue tinting of the vision. We call that, we call that cyanopia. Cyan as in like the color, and then opia as in your vision. So it causes this blue tinted vision. Why it causes that? I'm not quite sure. My theories include uh, sensitization of your retinal rod cells, but that's still up to debate. However, that's a very common symptom. So if someone comes in with blue tinted vision, you're suspecting ED drugs, and then they might ask, what shouldn't the patient take? Nitrates, or what does it do? Blocks PDE5, which decreases calcium, increases cyclic GMP, et cetera, et cetera. So those are just some things they can ask. Just, they'll just bundle it all into one question. So know the drugs, know the side effects, and then know how it works. Don't just know it works on PDE5, that's too basic. Know that it raises cyclic GMP, which decreases calcium and causes relaxation. That is your drugs. 
you, and if you pay very close attention to the, I guess the ads for these drugs, they'll say if you have a, if you have an erection lasting more than four hours, see a doctor. And that is very true, because that can cause a medical emergency called preopism. This is when your penis doesn't go back to its flaccid state. It stays erect and it stays engorged and that can cause ischemia, gangrene, basically necrosis of your penis. So it is a medical emergency. Some things that are associated with it is going to be your ED drugs, obviously. So ED drugs. Sickle cell. Because cells can sickle and cause vaso-occlusive crises for your lungs, bones, so your penis is no different. So sickle cell and TCAs can cause this. TCAs aren't, aren't regularly used for antidepressants so much anymore, but I guess they can ask the question about a patient that's come in with psychiatric history or I guess psychiatric symptoms and then they take a drug and then develop long-lasting painful erection. That'd be a way to ask it. And now you can recognize it more easily now that we've kind of talked about it here. So know that TCAs can cause it. How do you relieve it? You're gonna need to aspirate the blood out or you're gonna need to put in some sort of vasoconstrictor like, like phenyl I think that does it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.